Cool. Goal 21. You probably be asking yourself, well, it's, it was released in August, right? But we are doing this talk to, if you need a nudge to upgrade, perhaps that's the moment. And I hope that at the end of the day, you'll be like, hmm, perhaps I should update indeed. So one of the first things that you notice is still 21. We're still on the version one. We haven't done a major upgrade. So go for a long time promise that they don't want to introduce backward, like, well, any breaking change. They want you to always be able to upgrade without problems. This is still the case, and in this, this release, it actually had two interesting stuff for two interesting features, if you will, for keeping this promise. So one of them is backwards tooling compatibility. Although they say there are no breaking changes, you would spot some breaking changes somewhere. So for example, they changed uh, SSL encryption, if I remember correctly, and if you self, you self um, sign your certificates, you might use SHA-1, which is okay but Go enforces a different one. So there is a way now to kind of feature flag is like formalized with this Go debug primitive. So you can put like on package main, for example, or through a Go debug environment variable. There's a whole list on the website. So you will be able to get all the benefits of Go 121, but keep specific behaviors that might be breaking for some reason your code. Um, so have a look on this. It's one of the, I guess, one more interesting uh, points for upgrading to Go 121. And the other one is forwards tooling compatibility, which is a weird kind of, it's under documentation. For me, it's a bit weird kind of title, but mainly you can declare now, you remember the Go version on your Go mod? It might try to compile, and if it compiles, it's kind of best, not best effort, but like it would compile if it doesn't break with the new, new APIs or something. But with Go 121, it would download the tool chain. It's a kind of a minimal version. If you don't have, it will download. And the interesting thing is, you can basically, this is the last version that you do, will download because it will just fetch from Go mods. You can specify a specific version for your tool chain if you are doing some module and you want in this version. But this is quite interesting to define the version, which is um, an extra addition. But for me, the backwards compatibility one is the most interesting. Now, everyone, okay, so that's one of the main things for me when people talk about Go. The other one is the language is simple. Some people might say that actually this is a bad news. I would say that's actually good in general, but there are three new built-in functions. Yes, new three words. You looked at this, I thought, oh my God, there's three new things that I need to learn. But don't worry, max and min, you know what they do. They get maximum and minimum for elements and super simple to use. I don't need to go through besides some caveats, uh, variadic and slices, they don't work, it will error. And they can be shadowed. So if you, in this case, for example, the maximum function is returning the first element and this will compile. So just be careful about this. I guess it's kind of, in general, you're not going to go through them. And the clear is very interesting. So if you have a map and you have like all these elements, you can call clear and will delete all the items inside, which is good. And then you think, well, for a slice is the same thing. No, it isn't. It will just zero your elements. So just keep that in mind when you're using it. But it, it's kind of a nice addition in my opinion. Um, that's for language in general, but one thing that for me, when you work in a team, there's always like, oh, should we use Logris? Should you use Zap? Should you, should you use whatever library is cool at the moment for logging? And now with this new release, there's S-Log. Because yes, they had log println, it works, but it's not the best, it's not the structure. And that's why people use Zap and so on, other libraries. So the main things here is one, you have log levels, two is a structure, so you have fields and you can add contextual attributes as well, where you have context, you have typed uh, attributes. So no more fighting, like you just use as log and then perhaps depending on your use case, you perhaps go to zap or zero log. Uh, how it looks like, very simple. You can just import, it's a singleton in a way, but you can customize, I'm gonna show you in a second. It will look like this, which is very useful for those who use any other library. And you can obviously define like any other library as well. You can just define with specific handlers and so on with options. And in this case is you add a message, which is request and a key value pair with your specific fields that you want. Uh, the contextualized version, you can just add a context, you can add some types. So it's very similar. I, I use a bit of Zap, usually at work I use loggers, but it, it reminds me a bit on when I use Zap. And the end result is JSON. It's like, 
amazing. I don't have to have fights about this anymore. I can just create a side project just with this, or I can just use it at work. It can be used as like a common interface, really. There are other features which I'll not go through, but I guess as important, like grouping like that nested or child loggers or create a new instance, or even use Zap as the backend. So use kind of S-Log as a interface, really. So that's, for me, the most interesting package. There are other packages that they release with this function, with this version. Now, for those who remember, well, I am very excited about WebAssembly. Like, for me, it might be the future. We are learning, all of us learn containers, but who knows, perhaps WebAssembly is the new container. Now, I was so excited that I actually had a talk, which is in this blog post, where I experimented with Go, but the conclusion is, not super simple, and Golang doesn't support WASI. But that was until this version. So now we have a version of WASI port on Golang. Again, uh, I tested back then, tiny Go was way, like, way more efficient. It was way more smaller, smaller binary, but it's quite interesting to see Go with that. And as S-Log and WASI is one of those that most likely we'll see talks about exploring this in production and how this play out on teams, or in this case, Applications really using WASI in pr production level, just using the Go compiler, the normal Go compiler. And I might do a talk in the future with ImageWen, but backport and now for Go. So we'll see how it goes. I'm super excited. I guess this is one of the stacks that uh, is quite interesting to have in Go, so it can compete with Rust in the same level. Um, and finally, one of the, again, I don't have that so much time, but another thing that it, this one, I'm very interested and very curious about, but it's going to be kind of hard for me to experience, but you have profile guide optimizations. How does this work? You have a profile for those who already debugged some production, you extract the profile, and you have lots of information. So now think if your compiler can use that to optimize your code. So that's in a nutshell what the PGO would do. Three steps really, you compile, that you already probably do. Then you collect the profiles. Well, you might do, you might not do, but you need to do with this. And then finally you recompile with the profile, which is the dash p go. It basically, you need to add the p prof, which you might already have. You collect with this endpoint in a file, and then you finally call the go build. This gave like around, if I remember correctly, around 5% because Golang is already using for the Golang compiler. So it gave around 5% uh, of improvement. And uh, the main thing here is you have to keep doing because, well, new code might introduce new code paths, so it might have different profiles, so you need to always keep doing. So it's the last step, which it's a bit invisible with the other text, but yeah, uh, you have to always do, so your CI pipeline would have to adjust itself. Now, those are the main features which you can use today, but there is one less uh, feature that it's kind of, an interesting one, but you can't use in production yet, which is the loop var experiment. And it's a very crappy title for this slide because it doesn't tell much, but everyone that actually already has some production experience probably know where I'm going with this loop thing. You can be enabled by this environment variable really. And the example here is this piece of code. You think, well, I'm looping through this code. I'm going to have my um, wait by error group there running some code, and obviously this is going to be a random order, right? No, that's incorrect. That's not how the loop work. It actually kind of, there's a pointer thing, and then eventually what it will return for you, it will be this. I learned this in production. It goes through lots of reviews. You don't realize that's an actual issue. So now they're experimented with well, right now with the environment variable, you can enable this experiment and you see, well, what you would expect from the Google routine, which is like coming in a random order. Um, this is still experimental. We don't know how this is going to land because I'm pretty sure that some people might leverage this feature. So we'll see what will happen. But I am very keen to see this in Go 121, 22 or 23 really. It's like one of those small things that probably will land eventually. Um, I don't have much time left, but there's obviously more, more things that on this release, there's way, well, way more than this slide, but new packages, more efficient tracing, tracing better performance, depending on your platform. And for those who like, I, I haven't played that much out with generics, but there's better type inference as well. Um, and that's it. I guess I close in 10 minutes. 
Um, thank you Marvin, very much. If you want my contacts, just go to the website or be my GitHub, LinkedIn and so on. And yeah, I guess that's all. Hopefully you upgrade to 121 now. Cheers.